Aliens are not your friends. Visitors that will come to this planet, people will look at and see something not from here. They will see an alien. And it will not be your friends. You've been told, but you won't believe. You're mystified at the thought that something else is out there besides you. And there are. There are interdimensional beings. But that is where angels are. That's where heaven's at. That's where hell's at. It's a whole different dimension. And there are different dimensions where each one can be found. So, when we're talking about the devil and you read Ezekiel 28, someone will say that the king of Tyre is a man. But when you, or the prince of Tyrus, whenever you read farther on to it, it says, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God. That thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. When you read this, you, you figure out it's not a man. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations. And they're going to draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring down thee down to the pit, Thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. This is how you can determine this is not a normal man. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Well, that kind of speaks at all, doesn't it? Adam and Eve were ejected from the Garden of Eden. And they had guards stationed to make sure they didn't try to come back in. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes were prepared in thee in the, in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Cherub. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountains of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. Lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And me that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. 
Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Again, the word of the Lord came upon me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zidon, and prophesy against it. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon. I will be glorified in the midst of thee. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I have executed judgments in her, and shall be sanctified in her. For I will send in her pestilence and blood into her streets, and the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon every, every side. And they shall know that I am the Lord. There shall be no more prickier, pricking briar unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them, that despise them. And they shall know that I am the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, When I have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, and shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. And they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards, yea, they shall dwell with confidence. When I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them, they shall know that I am the Lord their God. So you're, you're being told about a, uh, someone that was in Eden, You're being told about someone that's uh, tied in with the cherub, the word cherub, and they were covered with all these precious stones and gold. And so they were really high up and they sinned, they fell. When we look at the word cherub, according to Webster's, it is an order of angels. According to them, it's a beautifully, beautiful, usually winged child in painting and sculpture, and an innocent looking, usually chubby and rosy person. So we're not looking for a person. We're looking for an angel. Jewish, Christian, Islamic culture, a celestial winged being with human, animal, or bird-like characteristics. Included among the angels in the Hebrew scriptures, they're described as throne bearers of God in Christianity and Islam, celestial attendants of God, and praise Him continually. In Islam, they're known as karban, and they repeat glory to God ceaselessly, and they dwell in a section of heaven inaccessible to attacks by the devil. In the art, they are often depicted as winged angels. So that is Webster's definition of cherub. When you click on celestial hierarchy, we get. A traditional hierarchy of angels ranked from lowest to highest in the following nine orders. Angels, archangels, principalities, powers, virtues, dominions, thrones, cherubim, and seraphim. So they're way up the ladder. We are told in Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, you and I are flesh and blood, mortals, but against principalities, powers, and against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So you have principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, and rulers of darkness. Principalities, powers, dominions. Are you seeing it yet? And these are, <clears throat> this is seraphim. It means fairy ones. They're 
burning love represented as standing above the king as he sat upon his throne, ready at once to minister unto him. The forms appear to have been human with the addition of wings. Elsewhere used as fiery serpents, sent by God as an instrument to inflict on the people the righteous penalty of sin. An order of celestial beings, whom Isaiah beheld in vision, standing above Jehovah as he sat upon his throne, described as having three pairs of wings, one which they covered their faces in humility, another pair they covered their feet out of respect, and the third they flew. General resemblance to the human figure. Occupation was twofold to celebrate the praises of Jehovah's holy innocent power and to act as a medium of communication between heaven and earth. Seraphim in the Jewish theology are connected with Cherubim and Orphanim as the three highest orders and are superior to the angels who are messengers sent on various errands. Cherubim and popular fancy were represented by storm clouds, and the seraphim were by flashes of the lightning, but they don't appear, none of this appears in Isaiah's vision. Then you have a term in Hebrew, the origin is uncertain. Seraph signifies a fiery serpent. The Babylonian name for the fire god, Nagal, was Sharpu. In Egypt, there have been found eagle lion shaped figures guarding a grave to which is applied the name secret. English term is griffin. So, happened here. <laughs> Something blanked me out there. <clears throat> what we have is the information we need to know that aliens are the evil angels. And they don't live here. And if they did live on Mars, Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, Venus, Orion, Draco, um, any, you know, anywhere else but here. That would be your high places. And who's to say? We only know about science what they try to tell us about science and drill into you. How do you know that once you get into space and you've left the atmosphere of this planet, how do you know that you haven't entered another dimension? How do you know? You set your foot down on another planet, perhaps you are entering another dimension. So even though these are not depicted with wings, as we read in scripture before, when they come to message, They can look like a human. So they can take different forms. They don't always have to come as three sets of wings or an infant with wings. So I'm telling you, you have all you need. Everything has already been given to you, all the information. And it all matches up with evil angels, the fallen. Those that chose to leave their first estate, come upon the land and mate with human women and create giants, and those fight against God and fought against God and were removed from heaven and cast out. Those are the aliens and they are not our friends. <laughs>